Welcome to Newbury Spring Festival. I'm Mark Hine and the festival director. We have a wonderful program every year for two weeks in May. Everything from international orchestras to world-class musicians in jazz, in world music, in cabaret, in chamber music. Every year, a completely different program. Every day, we go to different beautiful venues in the area. It's a festival that has been going for 44 years, and it's a joy to have you here, which is the most wonderful two weeks of world-class music. And I've been the festival director since 1999, which makes me feel very, very old. Um, so this actually is 25 years since I was appointed. It's not my 25th festival because of the COVID year. Uh, 2020, we had to cancel the festival, didn't we, actually, yeah. unfortunately. So next year will be the 25th festival that I've done. But I have actually been in this position for 25 years. And the festival itself has been going for 43 years, founded by Jeannie Carnarvon, our late great president. And when did you join, Ashley? Uh, I, about eight or nine years ago, again, I get confused because of the COVID years. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this is, I think, my eighth festival. So yeah. the new boy by comparison. And you are? Uh, so I'm Ashley Morris. I'm the general manager of the festival. Uh, so we work to very much alongside uh, Mark uh, deals with a lot of the artistic side of things, and then I deal with the more practical nuts and bolts and contracting and fees. And we join forces with sponsorship. So, um, although I, you know, I have this wonderful job of choosing the program, um, I don't claim to know everything about every type of music. So, for instance, we had a wonderful folk band, Trials of Cato, that our mm -hmm. chairman of our friends recommended. Ashley occasionally says, oh, what about this, this sparky young duo that I've discovered? So I, f I like edit, but I, I do sort of assemble and put together the programme, whereas Ashley, um, as you say, makes it happen. <laughs> That's it. I deal much more with the, the nuts and bolts side of uh, where people have to be and what time they have to be here and whether we've got enough stands and chairs and lights and transport, even down to meals and all, catering. All and of all that, all of that. And then the between us... Um, and with the support of the festival board, we make sure that we can pay for it. Yes. yes. And that's uh, a big, big job to do with nurturing and developing a lot of mainly private sponsors. Um, in fact, Viking is probably the only corporate sponsor, but Viking feels like a family, actually. We, don't we? Don't we, think? we do, absolutely. They're, they're very much working alongside us, which yeah. is uh, refreshing. And it's a family-run business, and Karina is fantastic, and all the Viking people we've met, and I'm not just saying because it's, it's Viking TV, it doesn't feel like a great big business. It feels like another mm. private sponsor of family. But we depend on our individual supporters um, and between us we do a lot with that uh, as well. Yeah and that ranges in size doesn't it from those who give a small amount every month there are some who pay just a small amount annually and there are those people who can afford to make much grander yeah. gestures and they're all equally important and all take a lot of our care and attention and that's why we we work with them to keep them exactly. we need that. So the festival happens over two weeks uh, in the, the, the middle of May. We always avoid the bank holiday, except this year, the king decided to be crowned on the opening day of the festival. So we were actually right into the middle of a bank holiday weekend this year, and we had to move our originally planned opening Saturday night concert to the Sunday. But normally the, the, the structure of the festival is that we have um, two events every evening, um, one of which is normally in the Corn Exchange. Mm -hmm. And then the other event, we have a radius of about 20 miles where we make a little church or a private house or somewhere like this sheep drove into a venue for a concert. And that's a lot of preparation. 
It is. It, it's bringing in the things that we need. And some, some things are very well laid out and already have what we need. Other things, we have to build a stage. We have to bring in lighting. We have to bring in sound. Pianos. Uh, uh, pianos, yes. <laughs> pianos in and out. Which always makes uh, last night's concert was an example of half-time entertainment that the audience gave the piano movers a round of applause as they took the grand piano out in the middle of the concert. Yeah, um, we, we, we have a fabulous concert hall, uh, which is otherwise St. Nicholas Church. But it doubles up in the festival as one of the great orchestral venues. I mean, conductor yesterday, first time he'd been there with the Estonian Symphony, said to me afterwards, this is one of the great acoustics. And I think it is. I mean, I'd rather hear an orchestra there than in the festival hall, frankly. Um, the immediacy, the, the, the connection you feel and the sound mm. is just amazing. But as Ashley said, we then bring in a, a Steinway grand piano and it's got to get out before the symphony in the second half. Yeah, we, we lack in storage space and backstage facility is a bit lacking, isn't it? But the, um, conductors and soloists are quite forgiving in sharing dressing rooms or yeah. making do with the church hall and sharing with the orchestra and things. So but this is a lot a of what, what the festival is about. It's turning yeah. a place that wouldn't normally be exactly. an international music venue into one with all the ancillary support structure um, exactly. And then we end up with this incredible series of performances mm. and audiences don't pay that much. I mean, one of the things that we're really proud of is our accessibility. And what's yeah. the top price at, at, at St. Nick's? About uh, £45. Pounds, 45 pounds. Yeah. But you can get in for, for 20, can't you? You can. And in some cases you can get in for free. Um, we have a range of schemes for uh, particularly those under 30. We have a scheme where different concerts are free, yep. completely free. Absolutely. Other ones we work with schools and give them free or discounted tickets. And we have a lunchtime series in the Corn Exchange Absolutely. where we have the, the balcony is completely reserved for children from local schools and they come yeah. again completely without cost. The totally. only thing they have to do is get there. Exactly. Um, and, we and then equally else. we take a lot of our musicians. I work with my colleague Jane who puts together an education programme and we not only bring local children, I think I, I will call them rather than students, but anyway, school children come in and then we take uh, our musicians out to them as well. So it's a really important side of our, of our work. And, uh, and yet we still have people that think that we're this very grand elite festival. We're, we're elite in terms of quality, but not in terms of accessibility. No, exactly. Tango negro, tango negro, te fuiste sin avisar Los gringos fueron cambiando tu manera de bailar Tango negro, tango negro, el amor se fue por más Se acabaron los candos en el barrio de Montserrat Más tarde fueron saliendo en comparsas de carnaval Pero el grito se fue perdiendo al morirse Baltasar, mandinga, conga, sibina Repiten en el compás los toques de tus abuelos Morocotú, morocotú, chachas Mandinga, conga, sibina Repiten en el compás los toques de tus abuelos Morocotú, morocotú, chachas Morocotú, 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 chachas Morocotú, morocotú, morocotú And it's lovely having this Viking presence because that means that what we do is now reaching an even wider. Again, that's audience. another frustration, isn't it? That we, we're very proud of what we've been doing for 40 years or more and we know what we're doing, but they're still trying to let everyone else know that that's, yeah. we're here doing this and it's on our doorstep. You don't have to travel up to London or even Southampton or Oxford. It's right here in, in the local area, bringing the breast, as we say, two weeks of world-class yeah. music. And it, and it really, um, I mean, the first week, we're, we're talking now on the middle weekend of the festival. And so far we've had, you know, just one extraordinary event after another, but we are very lucky with the venues. So um, Dowie Abbey is an amazing place um, with a, glorious acoustic for choral music and we had the Talis Scholars in the 50th anniversary. We're going to High Clare, aren't we, on Monday? High Clare on Monday. <clears throat> um, the home of the festival, really, because that was where our founder, Jeannie Carnarvon, um, that was her, her original home. Now, of course, world famous as Downton Abbey, but not large. When you, it, it, Huge building, but the largest 
space that we can put an audience in is what, 80 or 90? 80 people. 80 people. But that's in its own way special that you feel very lucky and very part of it. You, like you said, the family experience, mm. you get very close to the musicians, you're very close to the other audience. And it's, yeah. it's almost, it is like a concert in the front room. It really and is. it's a very special and, and, atmosphere. And the current Earl and Countess treat it very much as a sort of welcome to our home and aren't we lucky to have these marvellous musicians. And on Monday, we've got Sansara, this great, great choir, um, who uh, actually they sang for Jeannie Carnarvon's funeral, and I brought them back into the, the, the saloon, which is the sort of stone, it's, it's almost like a chapel um, in, in the castle, and I think they're going to be rather special, and they cu curated a, a programme around the gardens that, yes. to reflect the four gardens. Um, but, but the future of the festival, we want, to, we want to continue to bring in more young people and younger audiences um, and continue to make more events maybe that are... I mean, tell us about what we did yesterday, because I was judging the piano competition, but we had some free events in the town, didn't we? We did. Well? We've mm -hmm. had a couple of free events. We had a uh, Wantage Band performing in the bandstand, which was a, a new... well, a building on last year. Um, completely free, and it was on the coronation weekend as it happened this yeah. year, so it was a particularly sort of party atmosphere with flag waving and um, some programming based around the coronation. Um, but we've had another local uh, dance class school performing in the local shopping centre, um, and uh, we'd like to do more of that, so we're going to build on that. And we've had an evening with local musicians coming in and performing at the Corn Exchange. Yeah. So they're building and demonstrating some of the groups that are working in and around Newbury. This is a level. policy that we're trying to bring through because although we are proudly an international festival with musicians flying in from all over the world, the Estonian orchestra yesterday, world-class soloists, today the piano competition with candidates from literally the, the entire planet, but drawn from all the, um, the major centres of the UK um, where they're all studying, we're really also trying to involve the local community mm. of schools and, and, and the festival chorus who opened the festival on postponed from the coronation day to the following day because they we they wanted to watch the coronation basically rather than rehearse for the evening performance. But that's what seventy odd local people singing? Yeah, and, and growing um, it's a really popular thing because Again, a key thing we do there is that nobody has to pay to be part of that chorus. No. It's all completely funded by the festival. They come, they have their weeks of rehearsals with the professional uh, chorus master, Tom Primrose, who's, yeah, who's got a really, really amazing brilliant. career of yeah. his own. And he comes to Newbury and then prepares them to a, an amazingly high standard. Um, and that forms a key part of the festival. And what they did on um, Monday, on Sunday rather, was, was astonishing. And we, we did a, a, the Rossini Petit Mess Solennel, but in the past they sung with great orchestras, but that particular program I put together because I wanted to bring in as many members of the chorus as possible. And the accompaniment for the Rossini is two grand pianos and a harmonium or an accordion, which we, we had, which means we could bring in even more members of the chorus um, to fill the, 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 the stage. And, uh, and it was outstanding. Um, and we had an amazing lineup of soloists. I mean, really top class. And Lucy Crow, who sings all over the world at the Met, Covent Garden, she's uh, singing again tonight at Shaw Church with the same pianist, mm -hmm. coincidentally, Anna Tilbrook, in a wonderful program I can't wait to hear, with, including the Strauss Four Last Songs. And Lucy is one of the world's leading sopranos. I mean, no question about it. So we're really lucky to have her coming back tonight for, for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, of course, it's not just classical music. There's jazz and world music. We even had a team of Tibetan monks uh, in town giving a cult cultural showcase uh, with not only their spiritual practice, but also glorious costumes dressed up as lions and deers and buffalo and, and mm. extraordinary with lots of children coming in for that the was afternoon. One, that's it. We had a specific afternoon workshop with them, didn't we? And, yeah, and that was yeah. full. Um, that I've was already cool. heard from the schools how much they enjoyed that and yeah, experiencing a different culture completely. Totally, um, totally. And then we've got jazz and cabaret. We had the Argentinians, which I think you filmed um, tangoing in, 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 in one of our luxury uh, venues at uh, the Vineyard Hotel. So it's not just classical music. It's, it's, it's what I would say 
music that needs support rather than that survives on its own through, you know, through commercial recordings. So in other words, we don't do pop bands because we, number one, we couldn't afford them. Number two, um, we probably would, would not have a venue big enough. No. No. <laughs> but world music, jazz, um, classical music from symphony orchestras to choral events to chamber music, a uh, big emphasis on young artists. This is something I'm really proud of that mm. over the years we've not only got our regular lunchtime series of young musician concerts, uh, which as Ashley said, we also include the schools for free. free. But mm. wherever I can, I place young stars into the main program. And what, what I love is to see as well is how some of the young lunchtime people then move through. So for instance, mm. remember a couple of years ago, we had Ben, ben Goldscheid, yeah. who is arguably England's leading young horn player, I think now pretty yeah. established. Yes. He's coming back next week with his trio. Yes. Mm -hmm. And next year, this is sort of brief preview announcement, he's on the opening night in, the, in St. Nicholas Church with a big orchestra. So, you know, it's wonderful to see this development. Um, and as, as, as you know from the piano competition, which we're just about to have, in the past, some of the winners of this competition have moved on to great fame. And, um, and indeed, it, on a couple of occasions, I brought them back with major symphony orchestras to do uh, piano concertos. So I like the fact that the festival has got this sort of nurturing of, mm. of young talent, um, both as performers and as audiences. Audience. Yeah. And we do a children's show. Ash has got a couple we of do. children, so he knows That's what they like. <laughs> That's where I come in as an cons artistic consultant. Um, so, yeah, we do try. We have another one here at Sheep Drove that we have um, concerts for, well, f from babies to um, any age. We, a lot of grandparents bring their children along. We have group bean bags so they can sort of sit in comfortably or, or mess around in a bit. And that doesn't matter if they do mess around and get up and no. play and sing. We have a narration and story. Absolutely. And we've got another show at the end in the Corn Exchange with another... Um, Bun a, the monkey... A monkey puzzle, monkey an ad puzzle, adaptation yeah. of Julia Donaldson's book. You see, um, I don't know where you find these young... You, Ashley, with, how old are your kids? Uh, nine and four. Nine so. and four. So he knows exactly the taste of that generation. So I leave that to Ashley, but it's a really good thing to have is, as well. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully building audiences for the future. Exactly. I would say that one of the whole points of having a festival is to celebrate the area where it's happening. And this is a beautiful part of the world. It's actually, uh, those of you that don't know the Newbury area, it's extremely rural. Um, and beautiful in its, in, its, in its surroundings. And it's not that far from London. Um, and I think the festival, it puts a spotlight on this beautiful part of the world. And I know when I come down here, especially my first year, 25 years ago, I couldn't believe how, you know, really extraordinary the landscape is around here and driving these little lanes and getting to little villages like East Woody and then going on to Kintbury and, mm. and then discovering High Clear Castle and it's all its magnificence and then Englefield House and Sheep Drove. It's just a beautiful part of the world. And then you can go through this absolute joy of, a, of, a, of a, an environment, England at its best, at the best time of year, um, May, which let's face it, it really is, especially when it stops raining and then hear great music. I mean, you know, what more do you need? <laughs> That's it. It's the fact that it's here on your doorstep, I think, for me, that you don't have to travel, you don't have to go anywhere up to London, as I said, or down to Southampton, Oxford, or Bristol. Right here are some great things to try at affordable prices that we, we try and keep that going. And it's a chance to sample something and, and give it a try that we like to think that the festival gives it a, a, a brand of yeah. a sort of, a certificate of authenticity almost and yeah, that we program people, the greatest things. People now do trust my judgment, I yeah, hope. I so if, if, if I put something in the festival, they will go, you know, we, we, we will. And, and I'm trying to bring in more adventurous programming. So for instance, last week, we had a brand new opera commissioned from John, John Kaskin. Um, uh, outstanding, uh, we really overpowering. But this was with the great Sir John Tomlinson one of the greatest opera singers this country has ever produced. And he, it was a, a, a role created for him based around King Lear. Extraordinary. Everyone that was there 
was blown away. Um, but contemporary music, um, new work, new opera, we didn't sell it out, but those that were there loved it. And we're going to try and do more contemporary work. Next, week, next year, we're commissioning a new piece for, for, for the festival chorus. Um, last night, there was a lot of of au pair to, so we, we we're adventurous but at the same time we're not the all professful we're doing constantly challenging we 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 provide what people love and sometimes we we provide things that people love that didn't know that it would love before they came but i hope they trust that whatever we put on well they'll have a great time Newbury Choir.